Greetings, fellow ARC players, and welcome back to another episode of the Dino Archives. I'm Havoc with the HGC YouTube Gaming Channel, and in this video we're going to be talking about the anglerfish. We're going to talk about where they spawn, and we're going to talk about breeding and taming. We're just going to cover as much stuff as we can in a short amount of time as possible. And then as always, at the end I'm going to judge it on its overall usefulness, one being not very useful to ten being extremely useful. Um, I'm going to leave timestamps down in the comments section so you can skip to whatever section uh, you want. And then below that I'll put notes. So let's just jump right into it. I hope you enjoy the video. The anglerfish can be found on four different arcs. The island, the center, Ragnarok, and Aberration. The angler lives far from land down in the depths of the cold, dark and hostile ocean, making them an uncomfortable creature to track down. It isn't uncommon for anglers to be sharing their territory with Electrophorus, Cnidaria, and the godforsaken Tusotuthis. Collecting silica pearls is the primary function of a tamed anglerfish. You can bring home thousands of pearls after just one short silica pearl run. And to collect the silica pearls, use the anglerfish's primary attack as you swim over the glowing clams. I think the best way to maximize the efficiency of the anglerfish is to put points into melee damage and speed. Raising its melee damage will increase the amount of silica pearls it collects from each clam, and the speed will allow you to pick up a lot more clams in one bite. Another thing to mention is that the anglerfish doesn't have a saddle, so you can ride it as soon as it's tamed, but the downside to the angler not having a saddle is the loss of having that extra armor that saddles provide. Not that you would want to use an angler for any type of real combat anyway. Taming an angler can be nightmarish when you consider where they like to live. There's not a whole lot of uh, nice creatures hanging out in the dark abyss of the ocean, so when it comes to taming an angler, it's always nice to have a decent mount for clearing out the area around the angler you're wanting to tame. By isolating the angler, you're going to have a much more pleasant time taming it since you won't have to continually look over your shoulder. In most cases, a decent megalodon should suffice, but Depending on where you're at, there can also be electric eels, jellyfish, giant squid, um, other types of deep sea dinos that would pose a pretty serious threat to you and a megalodon. So I would say that the Basilosaurus would probably be the best mount for any type of underwater tame, but a Mosasaurus and a Tusotuthis would work really well too. Just be aware of your surroundings and try to keep your target angler away from the surrounding danger. Anglers are a standard knockout tame. You can tranquilize it by using a crossbow with trank arrows, or if possible, you can use the harpoon launcher with trank spear bolts, which you can unlock at level 72. Once you knock out the anglerfish, it won't take very long for it to wake back up, so make sure to bring plenty of narcotics to keep it under. The angler's favorite food is the kairuku kibble, which consists of one kairuku egg, one cooked meat, one savo root, two mejo berry, and three fiber. And the kibble can be made in either the cooking pot or industrial cooker. Since this isn't a perfect tame, I'm not going to use kibble. Instead, I'm just going to use raw mutton, which will tame it pretty quickly and at a fairly high taming effectiveness. The order of the angler's preferred food is kairuku kibble being the best. After that would be raw mutton. After that would be raw prime meat. Then raw prime fish. Then cooked lamb chops. And finally, if you have to, cooked prime meat. Anything less than cooked prime meat will take you forever and the taming effectiveness will be junk. If you have a male and a female anglerfish, you can breed them by putting them close together and enabling them to wander in their radial menus. 
I recommend building a small underwater cage next to a silica pearl field to store your angler fish in. It's also a nice place to breed them. It'll take about five minutes of mating before the female lays a super cool looking fertilized egg. Unlike the dinosaur eggs you find on land though, um, you're not going to be able to pick this one up. It's just going to stay where it was laid and it will start to incubate automatically. Uh, take a look at the egg and make a note of how much time the egg says it will take before it's done incubating and set an alarm on your phone. Once it hatches, you're going to need to imprint on it and make sure it has food to eat. Otherwise, it's going to die pretty fast. Once you imprint on the baby and put food into its inventory, look at the baby angler's HUD. Uh, to see how much time is left until it wants care and set an alarm for that. When that timer runs out, uh, you'll have an additional chance to increase the imprinting and get your angler some extra stat boosts. It may want a random type of kibble. It may want to go for a walk, in which case you just have it follow you for a little ways. Um, best case scenario, it's just going to want to cuddle with you. If you're playing on the PC, you just go up to it and hit E. Um, but if it asks for a kibble that you don't have, you're not going to be able to imprint on it any further until you're able to provide the kibble it's asking for. The anglerfish gets a 9 out of 10 for its special ability to collect tons of silica pearls. There's simply no other way to get so many silica pearls in such a small amount of time, which makes it extremely useful for mid to late game players. Silica pearls are required for many advanced items like platform saddles, riot armor, riot shields, and electronics just to name a few. Electronics are especially useful for making a whole host of other advanced items, including weapon attachments, refrigerators, lights, turrets, and so on. Usefulness aside, the angler looks really cool at night because it radiates bioluminescence. So what do you all think? Is 9 out of 10 a good overall usefulness rating? Let me know in the comments section. I am currently at 36 subscribers and I appreciate every single one of you for supporting what I'm doing. I am constantly trying to put out a better product for all of you to enjoy and I promise to keep striving to get better. So thank you all for your viewership and I hope to see you in the next Dino Archive where we will be talking about the Ankylosaurus.